Hi, welcome. Happy March. I hope this video finds you well. I am coming to you from my front porch in downtown Savannah. And because I live downtown, you may hear some uh, traffic roll by, just some city sounds. So um, I'm using earbuds. Hopefully that's going to kind of uh, lessen some of the other noises around, but it is beautiful outside today. Uh, it's actually a little overcast, but um, it's certainly warmer and it's just a nice day to be outside. And uh, so I decided to come out on the front porch to record this, check in, say hello, say happy 2022, everyone. Um, I know that I have not sent out newsletters uh, this year yet. So this is kind of just a, um, a return to the monthly newsletter, an update to let you all know kind of what's been going on uh, and where we're headed for 2022. We have a lot in the works here at Curate Soul. Um, so just to kind of update you on the past several months, our my last newsletter was in December. And um, about mid-December, I felt the call to just begin to turn inward, to begin to quiet um, my mind, begin to... I would hope to say relax more, but that wasn't necessarily the case. Uh, I was still working. Uh, we were seeing family over the holidays, but what happened was that I did kind of back off on social interactions uh, through social media and content creation for Curate Soul. So I just kind of let that uh, rest and uh, take some time to find some direction in, in where I wanted to head and where I wanted to be in 2022, what I wanted to offer, and kind of what was um, asking to be created. So uh, that lasted, that period of kind of rest and inner reflection lasted until about mid-February. Uh, there wasn't, again, a lot of creation outside of just teaching um, my weekly classes, uh, public classes. I have two here in Savannah, working with a couple private clients and um, doing my second job, bookkeeping for small businesses. And uh, just, again, that inner reflection, figuring out where I wanted to head this year. And so, you know, I think one of the biggest takeaways from the period was there was this internal conflict of feeling like I needed to be doing something, needed to be creating, uh, that my value was wrapped up in what I could offer out into the world. Um, some sort of workshop, being a part of a teacher training, trying to pick up more classes, uh, work with more private clients. And what I realized was that you know, the more I dive into my own practices, my own spiritual practice and these teachings that have been offered so freely from many different teachers is that we are nature. We're not separate from nature. And the winter months are a period of darkness, uh, which represents kind of a turning inward, a um, kind of a cultivation of our own inner landscape. What have we planted? What are we wanting to plant? What are we wanting to cultivate and harvest? And so as I continue to practice, I begin to realize these cycles within myself with more ease. And with that realization comes the need to honor those cycles. Instead of pushing my way through and maybe continuing to create or do um, over and over or for something that maybe isn't really happening in that moment. And sometimes that can cause some difficulty, that kind of inner struggle that I just spoke of. Um, so this year was, you know, there was still that inner struggle, but there was also that realization that I am nature, that I am being asked to kind of rest, to be quiet, to turn inward, to reflect. And then come spring, there will be a rebirth. In my own personal practice, there was a moment that I was doing, uh, I think an oracle poll. And one of the polls, um, the message was, trust that spring always returns. And as I was struggling in these winter months to um, figure out my direction, because not only was I not creating, um, I didn't have the drive. 
the energy to create, but also kind of that inspiration to create. It felt like the well had gone dry. And as, as somebody who loves to create um, and has created since I was little, uh, that's a little scary to feel. And if you're a creator yourself, you may um, kind of relate to that feeling of like, where is that inspiration gone? When is it coming back? Um, has it gone forever? Uh, so that unknown and having to um, become comfortable with living in that unknown, that in-between place, that transitional period. And so pulling that card um, and reminding me that spring always comes to trust that it does was uh, just medicine for, for my soul and what I needed at that point. And that remembrance that nature does the same thing. It cycles through the seasons. There is winter, there is a dormant period where it doesn't look like much is happening on the surface, but underneath those seeds are germinating. They are taking root. They are um, growing their foundation so that when they are ready to come through the soil to receive the sunlight of spring, the warmth of spring, they have a strong foundation. And so just remembering to honor that part of myself was very important. Um, and so about the middle of February, I began to feel that little spark reignite. Uh, there was some inspiration that was coming back. Uh, my, my own practice had also shifted as well. Um, I wasn't finding the same steadiness or groundedness in some of the practices that I had had for a while. And so it was a little unsettling to try to come into um, practices to find that groundedness once again, to know what would create that sta stable foundation for me. Uh, and I found that actually in returning to some old practices that I had not um, been using for several years. And sometimes, you know, returning to those fundamentals uh, can be the best medicine. And so I returned to a seated meditation practice. Um, my movement practice changed slightly as well. And I also began to work again with uh, mantra meditation and using my mala, japa mala. So um, a recitation of a particular mantra that I worked with for a few months. And uh, come the middle of February again, that spark seemed to kind of reignite. It was a slow burning. Um, and, you know, now it feels like as the seasons are changing that I am feeling that same alignment within and just kind of a um, that in alignment with the cycles of nature and that I was moving in a way that was honoring my inner landscape and again that inner landscape is no different and no separate than the cycles of nature and so again this is all medicine uh, and it's beautiful and i love that remembrance uh, that that comes over and over again um, and so that brings me to kind of the newsletter and what i have prepared for 2022 so uh, as a creative somebody that teaches weekly classes um, and offers a monthly theme I decided to do something a little bit different this year with uh, my monthly bhavana, that energetic uh, that I'm using for class. This year, what I did was used one of my favorite oracle decks, the Wild Unknown Spirit Animal Oracle by Kim Kranz. And I pulled a card for each month. I did a wheel of the year pull. And so each animal that I pulled for each month represents a certain message or certain energy or certain kind of uh, holds certain qualities or characteristics. And so I am using this particular message from the animal tarot, or excuse me, the animal oracle to relate to Ayurvedic and yogic uh, philosophies or concepts. And so for January, I pulled the lion. And for February, I pulled the hummingbird. And for March, I pulled the cheetah. And so I'll dive a little more into this cheetah energy. Those qualities of the cheetah are action. It's this masculine energy. It's also achievement and the idea of the solar force. 
This is very much in alignment with the energies of spring. Uh, it's this idea of moving up and out. I had mentioned the seed that is uh, resting beneath the soil, in the earth, in the darkness of the earth through winter. And uh, there's this germination process. And it doesn't look like much is going on from the outside, from the external world. But if you were able to dive deep underneath the soil, you could see that this seed is sprouting. It is creating a root foundation to move from. And so when daylight returns, the days become longer as we approach springtime and the equinox. The seed begins to sprout upward, this masculine energy of moving up and out. It is searching for more sunlight. And literally, this little sprout is moving boulder-sized mounds of dirt so that it can reach the sun. It is this call for a lot of action, a lot of energy to be used. It is this call for us to remember our own inner light and begin to create action in our lives. That's going to show up differently for each of us. You know, uh, take a moment to consider maybe where you're being called to create more action in your life. Maybe it's in your personal life. Maybe it's in your professional life. Maybe it's in your spiritual life. So what boulders are you being asked to move so you can reach that sun? More importantly, so you can shine your own inner light to the world so that the world can see that divine part of you. So this is also, this cheetah energy is um, also in alignment with the kapha season, that Ayurvedic dosha. Again, there are three doshas. There's vata, pitta, and kapha. Each dosha is a combination of particular elements. There are five elements. There's space, air, fire, water, and earth. And all of these elements have particular energetics, characteristics, and qualities. These elements combine to create the three doshas, and these doshas are then affiliated with seasons, the time of day, as well as periods of our life. And so right now, as we are in late winter and moving towards spring, we are in kapha season. This is the combination of water and earth, and those energetics of cold, damp, wet, heavy, stagnant, cloudy, sticky, um, are being balanced um, by these cheetah energies of fire, which is very mobile, which is very warm, it's sharp. It has this uh, quality of movement to it, this quality of heating. Again, that action, that transformation that spring is asking of us to help melt the coldness that winter maybe um, has lingering in our bones, maybe in our mind, maybe the physical body. Uh, so just, again, using that cheetah energy of the fire element to melt away some of this kaphic energy that's left over, this kaphic quality that's kind of hanging around during spring. In Ayurveda, we balance with opposites. So yes, we honor these springtime energies of heavy, wet, and cold. They can be very nourishing to life but we don't want to have those qualities in excess. And so we are asked to bring more movement to our day uh, and to our lives. We're asked to bring more warmth. We can use particular spices like cinnamon, cumin, some peppers, ginger uh, in some of the foods or beverages that we are taking in to create that warming energy and help move some of that stagnant coughic energy out and around. And so this is kind of the theme that I'm working with for March. I use this in my public classes. I use it with uh, private clients as well, and, as, and also my own personal practice. You know, just because I offer um, these teachings to others, uh, first and foremost, I am still a student. And so these uh, are teachings for me to remember as well, for me to apply in my daily life as I move through the world. So I would like to share, um, since I am coming into my own kind of spring, there has been a creation process and a birthing of some workshops and some opportunities to sit in community with me. So I'd like to take a moment to share those with you.
Um, I just had a pop-up yoga class yesterday, just a virtual offering. It's been a while since I've done that outside of a studio space. So um, thank you to those who registered, signed up, and joined me. It was great to have you. Uh, stay tuned. I hope to offer some more of those in the future, and I will reach out certainly through the newsletter to do that. Uh, the first thing I would like to share with you is my workshop. It's a virtual workshop called Nourish. It's an Ayurvedic approach to seasonal rejuvenation. Registration opens March 15th and runs through April the 3rd. And this is kind of an Ayurvedic spring cleanse. And when I am uh, sharing the particulars of this particular uh, workshop, this offering. I don't love to use spring cleanse. Um, the, the word cleanse in general, I think, holds a lot of negative connotation, a lot of diet culture, which is not something that I want to promote in any way. It also promotes this idea that we're dirty, that we're toxic, and we are so not any of that. However, what I do like about this approach to seasonal rejuvenation is it is just that is it is a realignment with our natural cycles it is a way to shed that stagnant energy of kapha season of late winter it is a way for us after turning inward through the darkness of winter to remember our light and to shine that again so I've created this uh, workshop together in community together to use food, to use uh, uh, subtle practices like meditation, uh, self-inquiry, oracle poles, uh, movement, yoga nidra, to begin to understand uh, what may have accumulated for us in the past year, especially through the darker winter um, longer uh, night periods, that inner reflection again, and began to kind of uncover those tendencies, those habits and patterns that we have, uh, that our nervous system has kind of latched onto, that at one point supported us, but maybe no longer is doing that. And so it's time to shed those. It's time to kind of let go of those and find new tools, new patterns, new ways to move, to feed ourselves, to nourish ourselves, and to practice um, that will keep us supported through the summer months and then back into fall, basically the cycle of this new year. And so again, um, this is called Nourish, an Ayurvedic approach to seasonal rejuvenation. The actual dates that we are in community together are April 18th through 24th. And during this period, you'll receive um, daily live meditations and oracle polls. We'll have three live calls via Zoom. So we'll have kind of an opening call, a middle point check-in, and then a closing call. You'll have a, access to a Facebook community uh, with resources, with others that are partaking in this, um, uh, this approach to seasonal rejuvenation. You'll receive daily emails from me that will have additional support, resources, guidelines, and optional practices. You'll also have pre-recorded yoga nidra a pre-recorded restorative yoga practice and a PDF with over 20 pages of um, guidance, recipes, and more. And so I would love if you join with me again, registration will open on the 15th of March and closes on April the 3rd. There is um, a little bit, if you are doing the actual um, cleansing aspect, the mono diet, you can choose a three, five, or seven day period um, to, to use the mono diet with us. Um, and there will be a supply list sent on April the 4th that will let you know all the supplies that you need for this uh, period, as well as how to begin the elimination process. And so what happens when we begin this cleanse, as we go on this mono diet, we are eating the same thing for a particular period of time. And we've eliminated things like meat, 
caffeine, alcohol, dairy, gluten, legumes. Um, and so we use this elimination period to slowly take these out of our diet. So it's not a shock to our nervous system and that this cleanse period is a little easier to process on not just the nervous system, but on a uh, physical level, mental, spiritual level as well. And so I'll be um, offering some more detailed information on this program over the next couple weeks as registration opens and as we get closer to time. But if you have any sort of questions, feel free to email me, um, shoot me a DM through Instagram or Facebook. I'll certainly answer there. Uh, but again, I hope you can join. Also, this is a sliding scale um, offering. Um, so you can join at your participation level and uh, more information to come on that. All right. So our next offering that I have for you is Nature's New Year at New Yoga Now. So New Yoga Now is one of the local studios in Savannah that I teach at. And I am offering a special Spring Equinox class on Sunday, March the 20th from 6.15 p.m. to 7.45. Right now, it's just in person. I hope to grow this and be able to offer it uh, virtually as well. I'm working on that, so stay tuned for more information there. Hopefully, you'll be able to tune in from the comfort of your own home, even if you are not in Savannah and you would like to join um, this Nature's New Year. This will be a mindful vinyasa practice, so there will be some movement. There will be a yoga nidra, a guided uh, deep relaxation practice that uh, just helps us recall uh, our inner nature and our connection to nature. And our the, the there is, again, that lack of separateness between us and nature, just that memory. Um, so I'll guide you through a deep relaxation yoga nidra practice, and then we'll close the evening with some self-inquiry. So um, having a journal with you, uh, pen and paper, uh, pencils if you prefer to draw, colored pencils, watercolor, paints, however you like to express um, this self-inquiry, uh, I welcome you to bring that more information through mind body check the link below i am going to add a link there as well so you can sign up and then again i'll just continue to share through social media probably another uh, little newsletter shout out um, if we get this virtual option going for you all right, I've got one more offering for this month, the month of March. Uh, again, honoring this spring equinox, this rebirth. Uh, this is on Monday night, March 21st. This is a virtual offering, so anybody, wherever you are, can join. Uh, it will be myself and a co-host, Sarah, from The Alchemistic. Um, I know a lot of you know her uh, and know that we've done some collaborations together before. Absolutely love working with Sarah. And so I asked her to join us for um, this particular offering. It is called Ritual Rest Rebirth. And again, this is Monday, March 21st. It will start at 6.30 p.m. It'll be about an hour and a half to two hours long, and it's sliding scale as well. So um, investment option is 10 to $30, whatever you are comfortable kind of sharing. Um, Sarah, again, from The Alchemistic, will lead us through a brief discussion of the energy and power of the vernal equinox through the influences of tarot, astrology, and goddess mythology. She'll also share how ancient rituals can be adapted for a modern celebration and an honoring of this special time of year. So Sarah is absolutely a deep well of knowledge in tarot, astrology, and goddess mythology. So you certainly want to join for this. Uh, she has so much uh, to share and offer. So I will then um, guide you through a yoga nidra. Again, inspired by the energetics of the spring equinox and the remembrance of our own rebirth and our own new year. 
We'll close with some self-inquiry and optional community discussion. So uh, if you want to share, you're welcome, but know that you are not obligated in any way to share uh, kind of some reflections about um, spring, what you're seeing in nature, what you're seeing in yourself. So again, just a way to create community um, and connection. Again, check the link below to sign up. Registration is already open. You'll be able to sign up all the way until uh, I think the day before. So registration closes on March the 20th and you will receive your Zoom link for the actual meeting the morning of the 21st. So that's all for the upcoming offerings for March. Um, like I said, there was like this just kind of burst of energy come the middle of February that I started having these ideas spring forth, uh, this creative flow, this well that just burst open again. So there have been a lot of offerings that have come forth through this month, and I hope that you will be able to join me. Uh, where can you find me otherwise? So um, I'll be sharing some recorded practices below. Uh, from January and February, just to kind of tap you into the energy of the lion from January and the hummingbird from February. You'll have some movement. You'll have a little yoga nidra, um, free practices. But I will um, also, if you feel the need to or call to invest uh, a little energy exchange, I'll leave a Venmo or PayPal link that you can um uh, offer a donation towards, but don't feel obligated in any way. Um, if you are here in Savannah, Fridays, 9.15 a.m., I am at OTM Wellness Space. Thursdays, I am in person at New Yoga Now at 4.30 p.m. All of the New Yoga Now classes are offered virtually as well. So if you aren't in Savannah and you want to tap in, uh, I would love to have you virtually. Again, that's a 4.30 class. It is... Um, mindful vinyasa and yoga nidra. So it's about a 50-50 class of movement and deep relaxation. My uh, Friday class at OTM Wellness Space is slow flow. Uh, and then I'm always available for one-on-one -on -one consultations or mentorship. Right now, space is a little limited, but I do have a couple spaces open. If you want to work together with yoga asana, uh, yoga philosophy, Ayurveda, yoga nidra, um, I am open for booking. So just reach out. Let me know if you are interested in working together. Uh, we can have a little uh, Zoom chat to see what it is that uh, you are working towards as far as health and wellness goals. And I curate these particular um, programs for you. So we can work together with one consultation, um, but I always suggest uh, at least a 40 day period together, ideally meeting once a week. So usually that's about six uh, meetings together. And again, these packages are created just for you. So um, we create an investment level that is accessible and comfortable uh, for your needs and uh, your desires. So thank you for uh, tuning in today. I may be making these monthly videos, uh, but certainly this one called for a video instead of typing this all out in a newsletter. It would have taken forever to read. So uh, again, thank you for joining. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you all in community. Thank you for your support, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Have a great day.